Peter, what do you got for us, buddy? Hi, Rich. How you doing? Good. I just wanted to say first off, uh, I read your book a few months ago, and it's it really helped me out. I started awesome. reading Rollo and watching all those podcasts, and I'm I'm far from I'm pretty early in my journey and being red pilled, but I just wanted to say thank you. Okay. I think my question's been somewhat addressed, but I'll still ask it. So I just I have no sexual experience, and but I'm really anxious to end that drought. But, mm -hmm. but do you think is sexual experience really worth pursuing if I have not reached my my excellence potential, so to speak? Twenty six, right? Yes. And you got to deal with that anxiety. You, yeah, well, yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit. But I mean, like, why haven't you been, you know, dealing with women at all? Um. Well, the, the usual culprits. I had a single mother. I also grew up in a very religious family. I grew up Catholic. Uh -huh. Not that I'm criticizing people who are religious, but it wasn't a healthy okay. state of mind for me. It, set me back lots of guilt yeah i where do you live by the way in what state i live in florida and what do you do for a living i'm an engineer i work okay. in the space industry okay so you make some good money right it's okay it's okay uh, my potential yeah. is i work for the government so uh -huh. my potential to earn is attenuated okay but... all right and you're in good shape. I mean, I, I don't see a lot of fat on your face. So I'm assuming that mm -hmm. you're not, you know, shaped like a pear, right? No, I'm in decent shape. My body fat, I got it measured recently and it's around 15%, which it could be better. But okay, I'm so this fat. is a game issue. Like this is a calibration issue, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Do you, um, do, you think it's, do you think it's worth pursuing that or should I just... Yes, that? dude. Like, yeah, dude. Yes. Like, it adds a watch, lot of watch, to watch Eddie Murphy... Okay, I can't remember if it's delirious or raw, but your twenties are your years to F. Okay, <laughs> yeah. those are going to be your best years. <laughs> well, not only that, man, it's a skill set that you have to develop once again. And if you're avoiding yeah. developing that skill set, true, it doesn't also, get easier; yeah. it gets harder. Yeah. yeah, to vet out what girls want you for genuine desire and what girls are going to mm -hmm. want you for your other SMV qualities, particularly your wallet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you wait until you're really doing well financially and like killing the, you know, whether you're a government contractor making, you know, multiple six figures, all this stuff, have all a nice toys, nice house. Now I'm ready for a wife, right? We talked mm -hmm. about this little just right before you got on. That's not a good recipe, dude, because they're gonna go for you, sure, for your wallet, and it's not gonna be good. It's not mm -hmm. going to turn out well for you. And we see you have happen, to, yeah, you really have to again. calibrate to like today's women to understand right. what they're all about because yeah, they are is, absolutely nothing like what you think the church or yeah. your mom told you they're supposed to be like. Yeah, I've had I've had a lot of, I've had a few bad experiences. I I will say one point of anxiety is I'm I'm five foot six and I'm really short and I used to really blame that on my failure of women instead no. of owning up to the things. No, it's got nothing. Yeah, Paul fine. short. Paul short. Paul's, Paul's five three. I'm only five so. foot Paul. one. Yeah. Paul's four foot eight. Yeah, he's not even like six <laughs> foot tall, right? He does. Five, he does four just four fine with women. Seven. Peter, Peter what, I'm an engineer I'm and I'm Catholic. Catholic. Paul Dong too. Dong is like <laughs> height. <laughs> height is height is not as important as you think. Like if you're five foot six, you mm -hmm. can easily date a five foot two chick, just as long as she's looking up to you. Yeah, definitely. Just, right. Peter, what are you doing right now as far as dating apps and stuff like that? Are you like on Tinder, Bumble, Hinge? What are you doing as no. far like you swiping or what are you doing? I, I went on one hinge date and it was so awful. I deleted everything. <laughs> he's just Why thinking about it, it right now. I don't think he's doing that. Why was it awful? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm really, I've never done it beyond that. Okay. Do, yeah, do you have a crew? Do you have a tribe? Do you have a bunch of guys? Um, I've moved every couple of years for my career. So my life is pretty fragmented, but I have a couple of good friends every place I've lived. But what do you do for fun when you're not working? Life. I work a lot, but I'm mostly <laughs> exercise. Lately, it's been mostly reading books. And I are you? A couple hey man, hobbies. are you interacting with women when you're exercising? Like you're part of a, a gym or a? I'm, yeah, I joined a CrossFit gym. Okay, there's um, lots of chicks in CrossFit. Several months ago, oh, yeah. <laughs> not in okay. Florida. Not but, in Florida. So go to a gym it, where there's more women. He's, like uh, he's in the government. He's probably up in the Panhandle, right? You know where there's a lot of. You know where there's a lot of women, and it's a good workout. They um, they call them nine rounds here. I don't know what they call them in the states, but they're basically thirty minute boxing um, sessions, and they're always calibrated by a trainer. It's a honeypot. There's it's like it's like eighty it's like eighty percent women. 
right? I yeah. mean, like you kind of have to go to where the fish are. I mean, if you're fishing and you want to catch a fish, you kind of have to go to where the fish are. But if you're surrounded by sausages and all you're doing is hanging out by yourself and, you know, you don't get that exposure, you're not going to be able to calibrate to women and have conversations. Because, I mean, like the first thing that you got to deal with is yeah, have yeah, a probably. comfortable drink or a coffee or whatever it is that you're going to do with a check and walk away at the end of it where she's like, hey, Pete, I dig your vibe. You know, can you call me again so I can see you soon? Mm -hmm. Right. That's like the so, first step, you know, forget about, you know, getting laid and losing the V card and all that. Like the first step is calibrating to conversations with women. Go ahead, Paul. Right. Yeah. And just, I want you to shift your mental focus here. Be, be uncomfortable with this and that's okay. All right. Because you need to be uncomfortable in order to get comfortable. You know what I mean? And to start developing those skill sets and consider it something that is a priority to work on. You know what I mean? And it's mm -hmm. instead of avoiding it. And that's, that's because again, you're, you're, you're going to run into a problem as you do increase in your, in your wealth and you, what you're doing, you know, you're probably a very smart guy. You're probably on the, on the road to doing very well. You, you're going to run into that problem where you're not going to be able to decipher who, who's actually wants you for you and who's mm -hmm. wanting to run you through the machine. And you need to figure that out now. It's a process of figuring it out mm -hmm. as you grow. But the analogy I wanted to, to use real quick, though, was imagine if I said, dude, don't go to the gym or think about your diet for the next seven years because you got to work on your money situation. That would be really bad, right? <laughs> like that'd be <laughs> potentially bad, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you're not. But is the gym the focus of your whole life? No, no. Right. It's just something you do because you're working on it. It's a priority to take care of your your body. Right. And, and, you know, take care of your mental fitness. All that stuff should be a priority. And this should be a priority too. It's not the main one. You're not chasing mm -hmm. women. You're just working on your skills, man. And just shift that up over a little yep. bit. You got mm -hmm. a lot of good content out there. You got my channel, Rich's channel here. And you can start working on those skills and finding which road you want to go to. It's, mm -hmm. not a, it's not a race. It's a marathon. It's not about just getting laid. It's about getting better. You know what I mean? I would... I would start by putting yourselves in rooms where you can have comfortable conversations with women and not feel anxious about yeah. it. So that might be yeah. workout stuff. That might be like, I don't know, like some other hobby that you like, but put yourself in an environment where there's women that you're attracted to, where you can just have a casual conversation where anxiety doesn't kick in. You don't start to stutter or anything like that. It's just comfortable. And then it'll get to the point where it's like, Hey, you know what? You know, just had a ton of fun today. Why don't we uh, take this conversation over to that bar over there and have a drink? Right. And you just kind of sit down outside of that, you know, kind of work, uh, you know, hobby sort of zone and make it more into like a date zone. And then you do another venue change, which can be like, hey, you know, my place is two blocks that way. Why don't you come over? I got some wine in the fridge. And that's when you start to escalate. But yeah, I mean, like you, you got to get to like step step one, but you just have to do it. Right. You just have to get out there and start doing it. Like just get mm -hmm. comfortable with it. I mean, I think about this too, man. Like you're inviting. We were all dorks people. at one point too. Like yeah. all of us here, we all yeah. like you yeah, know right. we're in that same we're anxious zone there. that you were. Still it's am. Just, still am. Yeah. <laughs> Paul's yeah. Paul's still there, but I mean, like you know, for yeah. some of us, it was until we were like 18, 19, 20, 20. You know, for mm -hmm. you, it just happens to be twenty six. You just kind of have to push through it. You just have to lean into it. And mm -hmm. is the life that you're creating for yourself one that a chick is going to want to join you into? Yeah. Are you going to bring her in a situation where she's going to have fun and she's going to associate good feelings, fun feelings with you? Like Jared and I have this thing where it's right. like, I'll, we'll tell girls like, you'll never be bored. If anything, if, if nothing else, you'll always have fun and you'll never be bored. So I mean, yeah, you know, I know you like to work a lot. It sounds like you're stacking cash and being an engineer and can tell you're probably mm -hmm. not, you know, it's not a super interactive with people and very front facing all the time kind of job, but you know, that other kind of stuff, like what you're doing for fun, your social settings, things like that. I mean, you're living in Florida for, for God's sakes, you know, the weather's great. So it, it's, you know, what life are you creating that someone is going to look at you and be like, all right, I want to see what this guy's about. And I want to join into that because that looks fun. But, um, that is yeah, I'm off. I, uh, Peter, I, no, I, I'm, I'm just saying the, 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 the chapter and sorry to interrupt you. The chapter in Rich's book that stood out to me the most was the chapter about the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Was that? Do you have a yes. bike or did you buy one? I really want to buy one. Yeah, get, get one. one. Yeah. Get one. Yeah. You'll get one. You only Listen, live once, man. Get one for sure. Charles hey, is selling one. Peter, Peter, I'm a Catholic engineer as well, okay? And just going back to what Paul said, he can't emphasize that enough. You're 26. You're a sharp-looking guy. You have a steady job, a good career. If you don't get on top of this now, it's going to rain baby rabies on you in about four years. 
And these okay. chicks' eggs are going to start, their clock is going to start ticking, and they're going, well, he's a good guy, Peter. He's clean, he's cut, he's nice. They'll marry you up, and, and it's going to be a train wreck. Yeah. They'll marry you up and take your kids and half your shit and see you later yep. about seven years down the road. So, Peter, that's what I was going to say. You're, you're a good-looking guy. You're sharp. Yep. You're well-spoken. You're clearly educated. Uh, you told me what you work in. I work in that industry, too, so I have an idea of what kind of money you're making. There's no, there's no reason you should have any sort of problems with women. So it's all in your head, man. It's, it's the anxiety that you really have to deal with. You know, I see that all the time, and really just build, get, get your reps in, build your confidence, talk yeah, about all get your women, reps in exactly. Talk you know how easy women, it is to deal with anxiety, funny, flirty way. You, you know how easy it is to deal with anxiety in women when you got a motorcycle. It's so easy, dude. It's like all <laughs> like chick, like chicks love bikes. Like just get a spare helmet. And just mm-hmm. like chat them up and be like, hey, I got a bike and let's go for a ride. Let's go down to the beach. It's like, you know, I know this place and you just, you know, go for a zip. You need to make them feel, feel good emotions. So even if you're in the line at a coffee shop and there's something that happens, make a little witty comment, a little whatever, and then just get in the habit, train your brain of when there's a female present, she feels good around me. And then that'll naturally start escalating. And even if you're kind of nervous, you know, your first initial encounters, a lot of these chicks, like. They a lot of them just kind of a lot of them try to lead the way anyways. For me, half the yeah. problem with American chicks is like, hey, I got it. Like, hold on. Mm-hmm. All right, Pete, you hey, good think with about that? getting the community, man. Like Chris, mm-hmm. Chris Amy's in the chat. I don't know if you see this. If he's yeah, serious, man. take him up on his offer. He's saying he'll pay for you to join the community. So you don't get that. <laughs> you don't get that very many places, man. Yeah, there's yeah, there's well, a URL. It. it will be yeah. pinned yeah. in the top comment. If you, you want to come into the community, it's open. Be prepared to do work. Don't don't show up and you know expect the uh, entire roadmap to be handed to you. You have to engage, okay? Yeah. We um, just lost a guy today for the same exact reason that you probably need to get in there uh, because yeah. we go re- really deep into this stuff. 100%. All right. Um, yeah. Pete, uh, just just get started, right? Like, you know, how do you eat an elephant? Just one bite at a time. You just get started, right? Okay. All right, man? Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Thanks brother. See you, Pete.